Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Second Sun Woodworks. My name is Caleb, and today I'm going to be showing you how I turn this scrap wood from my shop into these beautiful end grain cutting boards. Stay tuned. Making end grain cutting boards like this may seem complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. The first step in the project is to cut down the wood that you'll be using to a certain length and width. And so, using this maple, birch, and walnut, I'll be cutting down each of these pieces to 24 inches long with my miter saw. And then I'll go over to the table saw and cut down the wood to 2 inches wide. And I'll just get as many strips as I can out of this scrap wood. As I rip down this wood, I want to take a quick second to thank my brother Josh for mixing up these cool beats that I have in the background. They're super good. Uh, if you want to check out his stuff, there are a few links below. Thanks, Josh. After I finished cutting down all of the pieces, I took them over to my workbench and started to line everything up. You'll notice too that I held on to the pieces that are less than 2 inches wide. You can just add those into the different boards. So as I started to line everything up, I divided them into 3 different groups, which will make up the 3 different cutting boards. And then I went ahead and started gluing everything up. It's kind of funny, I always tend to use either too much glue or too little glue when I'm doing projects like this. Uh, you know, it's kind of difficult to find that sweet spot when it comes to the glue. But I will say that if you're doing cutting board like this, it's better to overuse glue than underuse because of the fact that you'll be, you know, utilizing uh, this with water on the board. Uh, you know, it might be moving around constantly, you know, going into storage and out of storage, you know, onto your countertop. So overuse glue if you have to. And I probably am going to get a few comments uh, below about me using Type Bond 2 instead of Type Bond 3. You might be right. I just had Type Bond 2 in my shop and it's always worked well. But if you really want to play it safe, get some of the Type Bond 3, which is completely waterproof, unlike Type Bond 2, which is more water resistant. After the boards had enough time to fully cure with the glue, went ahead and took them out of the clamps and then went over to my planer and uh, planed both sides of these boards to a nice uh, smooth surface. After I finished planing these boards down with my planer, I went ahead and took them over to my sliding miter saw to cut inch and a half wide strips. You could use your table saw to do this, but my table saw was uh, uh, a little less uh, accessible than this miter saw, so I didn't just use that. You can see here that I put up a stop block too to make it uh, quite a bit easier to get the, uh, the inch and a half thickness. You'll notice that I have to use my pull saw for a couple of the cuts 
that are just a little bit too big or too uh, long for my miter saw. Also, there was a few pieces that broke during this process, and so you'll see when I do the final look that I had to kind of uh, put everything back together. After I finished cutting all the strips down, I took them over to some bar clamps and flipped them over on their sides, laid down a nice thick bead of glue, and then flipped them back uh, onto their uh, sides with the grain, the grain facing out and glued everything together. And there was quite a bit of squeeze out of the glue, which I actually wanted because then I used um, some sawdust and sprinkled some sawdust over top of the boards um, to kind of fill in uh, any holes or any gaps, uh, if there were any, uh, with some sawdust and glue. And then I repeated the steps with the next board. And oh, I should mention that you can flip the pattern of these different pieces any way you want. Uh, I kind of just went in and, and out uh, with the different uh, pieces of wood so that it had kind of like a checkered look. But you can do whatever you want. Once one of the boards had completely dried, I took it over to my planer and started planing the end grain down. Now I'll probably get some comments from people saying that you shouldn't be planing end grain like this, uh, but if you take really slim uh, uh, cuts each pass, really you know small amounts off each pass, then it will be fine. But do be careful if you do this. After that, I took it back over to the miter saw to square up the ends. Then I returned to the very last board to do all the steps. I then used a quarter round bit with my DeWalt palm router to round over the edges of the boards.
I then moved on to using a really low grit sandpaper to kind of sand out any of the uh, blemishes that still remained. And then I went and used uh, some glue and sawdust, mixed these two together uh, to fill in any voids or leftover cracks in the boards before moving on to the uh, full sanding process. I started with 120 grit sandpaper for the uh, complete sanding process and then I moved from 120 to 220 and then to 320. After the sanding steps were fully complete, I went ahead and prepped an area to begin the oiling of the boards. Now for these boards, I'll be doing three separate coats of pure raw linseed oil, which is food safe. And for the second and third coats, I'll be using some uh, really fine steel wool to rub the oil into the boards.
The very last step in this process was to use some Howard Butcher Block Conditioner, which is just food grade mineral oil and natural waxes to polish the boards down one final time. Then after that, the boards were complete. And I gotta say, I'm really excited about how these turned out. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you uh, have any questions or comments, leave them below. Make sure to check out my other videos. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you stay notified. And uh, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Build something cool. Take care, guys.